What's cracking, big dogs? It's your man's Nicholas. We're back in the HQ, of course. Where we're bringing y'all big facts only. A lot of new merch on the website, bigdogsfantasy.com. If you're trying to support the brand, if I've helped you out this year, that's an easy way for you to do so. Plus, you're repping some fresh swag. Also, backed by popular demand, the big dogs daddy hats are back in stock. Also on bigdogsfantasy.com, we got the khaki flavor. We got the black flavor with the white stitching. We got all the flavors you want. These are actually, I'm really fucking happy with these. how these came out. So, uh, cop yourself a Big Dogs Daddy Hat. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, now, normally if I do a sit start, we kind of just talk about guys that we like or I'm answering Q&As and whatnot. This is what we're going to do. We're actually going to go through, I'm going to go through with y'all my playoff matchups. It's Friday right now. So we had Thursday night football last night. Um, we had the Chiefs. We had the Chargers. A good game. Not for me, for fantasy purposes. But overall, it was fun to watch. It's the next day. So we had a lot of players going last night. What I'm going to do is take you through my lineup. So I am in uh, six, I, I believe, six playoff matchups of my eight leagues. So I missed out on two of my redraft playoffs. I made it in three of my redraft leagues. Um, I'm in three dynasty leagues, which I made the playoffs in all three. But uh, I will not be going through those lineups because dynasty is a little iffy uh, a lot of the sit starts aren't really um whatever we're just going to stick to redraft for right now we'll put it that way so i'm going to go through three of my lineups in redraft in which i have playoff matchups and take you through some of my sit start options and break down some of the player analysis obviously along the way so it's going to be a little bit different but i think you guys will get just as much value from this as you would through a regular sit start video because it's the same thing but it's actually my thought process behind my actual lineup so y'all will dive in with me uh, thank you for joining me on the video today. As always, if you're feeling some lovely type of way, drop a thumbs up down below. It's much appreciated. It lets me know that you appreciate these videos, and I will always keep making them. Um, and as always, please drop some comments down below what kind of off-season content you would like to see, because this thing is, is full-time, baby. We, we're in the grit now, but let's get into the video. Okay, so this is the E-Town Get Down, my big money league, the one with my friends. If you haven't been watching the E-Town Get Down weekly recaps, uh, they have been fucking awesome. They've been super, super fun to, to make. So me, Snacks, and Max, me, Snack, Big Facts, Big Snacks, Big Max, sit down every week and discuss our league, um, along with a bunch of other random shit that we just come up with kind of on the spot. But I'm in the playoffs for this one. I finished with a 9-5 record. I'm not going to catch you up on everything, but the matchup this week did not start off great. I had Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Justin Jackson going last night. Uh, Mahomes and Kelsey combined for about 27 and a half points. Now, normally, one of those guys every single week puts up those numbers by themselves. Of course, since I really needed them in the playoff matchups, they're not going to do that for me. However, I started Justin Jackson. Now, this was one of the tougher sit starts for me this week because I picked up Justin Jackson off the waiver wire last week, and I, I have a lot of depth on this team. So my wide receivers, Devonta Adams, Robert Woods, Stephon Diggs, right? So I want all three of those guys in my lineups pretty much. My running backs, Philip Lindsay, Aaron Jones, Justin Jackson, but I also have David Johnson on the bench. The decision, uh, Philip Lindsay's a must start for me. He is the clear RB1 there. Uh, I'm not scared of Cleveland's defense whatsoever. So uh, you got to have Lindsay in your lineup. This week he is, I believe, my running back eight or something like that. If you want my rankings, patreon.com slash BDGE. Lindsay's in my lineup. Aaron Jones, David Johnson, and Justin Jackson were a much closer fantasy call for me. Um, and even St Stephon Diggs, because we have two flex spots. So I could realistically put um, either Diggs on the bench, Jones on the bench, David Johnson on the bench. Aaron Jones, my thing is, he's just been too damn good. He's just been too damn consistent. When you look at the numbers, he's getting all of the touches. He has scored. Look how many touchdowns he's got. Two, three, four, five, six over the last five games. And that doesn't even take into account the receiving touchdowns, which are somewhere over on the right. Yahoo, fix that shit so you can actually scroll over to see the receiving stats as well. You mudda, you mudda, f whatever. Um, Jones, I, I understand the matchup is really shitty. I do not like the matchup at Chicago whatsoever. I just think I just think he gets too high of a percentage of that volume in that offense, and I think that he's just too good as a player. So I was getting Jones in there. There was no fucking way I was sitting Aaron Jones on, on my bench for David Johnson. Justin Jackson was what we expected to be the clear running back one in this Chargers offense last night, right? 
And it was a little, I was a little nervous, man, as this game was progressing. He was not efficient. We were seeing that rookie come in and get a bunch of touches. End of the day, he ended up with, I believe, 19 touches, uh, got in the end zone. So 16 points. I'm happy with that considering I, on a weekly basis, I don't expect 16 points from David Johnson. So it was between Diggs and it was between David Johnson for me, realistically, at the end of the day. And I ended up, well, for right now, actually, I guess I could still make a move if I wanted to, because that's one thing I did. That's one thing you always have to do, guys. If you have players playing on an early day, if you have someone going on Thursday, and I guess for this week, even Saturday, you want to put them in their regular positions. Uh, for instance, like if you're going to start Justin Jackson over Stefan Diggs, you want to put Jackson in the running back spot instead of the flex spot. Because if something were to happen to Stefan Diggs this week, like Saturday night or something, right? Sunday morning comes and I'm like, shit, I have to sit him. If you had him in his wide, in the wide receiver spot and used Justin Jackson in the flex spot, then you can't use that flex spot, right? There's no diversity there. Now you have to use another wide receiver from your bench and you might not have another wide receiver to use. You might only have like David Johnson would obviously be the next man up. But since I put Justin Jackson in the flex instead of the running back spot and Stefan Diggs in the wide receiver spot, and now I need to swap him for a wide receiver, I can't put David Johnson in there. But that's just a little side tip going forward. I know I'll, I'll remind you of that stuff going like next year and whatever. And I'm also working on a video of my top lessons or takeaways from the 2018 fantasy football season. It's really funny actually, because when I started writing the article, I was like, oh, I'm going to struggle to come up with like five or 10 things. Next thing I know, I have a list of like 35 things that I'm like, okay, this is really going to help people on going forward. But I ended up going with Diggs over David Johnson for two reasons. One, Diggs gets Miami. So I think they're in a great bounce back spot between Cousins and that passing game because Miami's a weak passing defense. And Xavier Howard is all but ruled out for this game. Let me check if he if they've officially ruled him out yet. I'm not sure if they have. Okay, there you go. Well, that's one of the last updates is Xavier Howard is doubtful for week 15. Xavier Howard is obviously the best defensive back on Miami. So I'm like, you know what? Diggs is in for a bounce back game. That passing game is in for a bounce back game. And Diggs is getting a ton of targets regardless. Just saw a funny stat actually that Diggs has 88 catches and not a single drop. And that's the most of that category without a drop in the history of... So Diggs is actually on a historical pace right now in terms of catching the ball, right? That commercial about him not dropping anything is big facts. It's literally big facts only. So uh, I really like Diggs this week. And uh, like I said, Aaron Jones, honestly, and the other reason was just like, fuck David Johnson, honestly. If you if you drafted David Johnson at this point, it's almost out of spite. Like my hatred for David Johnson has taken a personal turn. And I could not have been happier to sit his ass on my bench and continue to let him rot away on my bench throughout the year. So that's not going to be the position for a lot of people. Most people won't have a team as stacked as mine or with as much depth, I should say, as mine is where I have to choose from Adams, Woods, Lindsey, Jackson, Diggs, Jones, right? Um, and it was really close for me. And David Johnson obviously is going against Atlanta who have just fucking donated points to the running back position. But I don't trust David Johnson whatsoever. I don't trust that offense at all. They are on the road. And like, look at his past three games, 10 points, seven points, 8.9 points. Like, I understand he had that big game against Kansas City, but dude, he has been something fucking awful this year. And them switching over to Leftwich has not been good. Like, I got excited for it after the first game, and I knew it was a wrong thing to get excited about because I was watching the game, and I was like, as a David Johnson owner, I was like, oh, I hope they turn things around here. And I got excited because he scored fantasy points, but I knew in the back of my head, I was like, this doesn't look any different. He's still running David Johnson right up the middle on first downs all the time. Yeah, he used him in the slot on like two extra plays that game, but I was like, it doesn't look like anything is going to change here. And since that first game after the bye, you could see his fantasy point totals. He had that monster game, right? 33.8 points. And then from there, it's been pretty much all downhill. And listen, I didn't want to start David Johnson and then be, and then know all along, I was like, fuck. I, I would regret not starting Justin Jackson over him. So I'm happy with the 16 points. I honestly would be surprised if David J uh, Johnson went over like 17 points. So um, I'm happy with that sit start. I'm obviously not happy about how Mahomes and Kelsey performed. But T.Y. Hilton has missed a start uh, practice again for the third straight day. He missed Friday's practice. I'm filming this on Friday, so things might change by Saturday, as always. So hopefully T.Y. Hilton sits and uh, and then this matchup gets a little better for me. The only other sit start decisions I really have are, I guess, the quarterback position. So I have Andrew Luck as my QB2. He's at home against Dallas, so there's pretty much no way I'm going to sit him here. Um, with T.Y. Hilton out, it might be a little bit of a hit to that offense. But the other options, Lamar Jackson versus Tampa Bay, just Jameis Winston at Baltimore. I'm definitely not starting Winston at Baltimore. Really tough pass defense on the road. have no faith in that happening whatsoever. Lamar Jackson is another interesting one, but I also don't want to play Jackson because I think he's a little bit risky in terms of turnover 
turnovers um, and Joe Flacco being back. We don't know how that's going to happen. If if Lamar Jackson does start playing poorly or if he does start turning the ball over, now they actually have a, another option to turn to in Joe Flacco. So I think his, his leash is probably a little bit shorter. And uh, that's not a big reason that it's going into my analysis. But I don't really trust Lamar Jackson because he just runs so much. And I think the injury his, uh, risk is, is high up there. And when I have a guy like Andrew Luck, who's so safe, obviously outside of that one terrible game against Jacksonville has been so good. Um, I don't think there's any reason to really risk it with Lamar Jackson. I ain't risking it for the biscuit. In terms of defenses, though, so I picked up Baltimore, Seattle, Denver. Baltimore versus Tampa Bay is the team that's in my lineup right now, but I am really, really deciding between Seattle at San Fran and Baltimore. When I look at these matchups, I like Baltimore. I like their passing defense, but playing against Tampa Bay is just nerve-wracking because Tampa Bay is a team that could at any point you know, put up 35 points. I know Jameis might turn the ball over and get sacked a few times, but like at the end of the day, if he's going to put up 35 points, that defense is really only going to come away with like six points. But Baltimore is riding hot right now, um, except for the game at Kansas City, which of course is going to be a tough matchup for any fantasy opponent. They had 15 fantasy points the week before that against Atlanta, 18 fantasy points the week before that against Oakland. So, I mean, you could see three sacks in a row in three straight games. So they are getting to the quarterback and they are being able to pressure. They just get in the face of the quarterback. And it's not like Tampa Bay has a great pass blocking line. So I expect that to kind of continue. But again, like I said, that offense and James Winston can go for 400 yards any day of the week. So that kind of makes me nervous. Seattle though, you know, I always try to play teams that are at home and, uh, and are bigger favorites. And in this case, Baltimore is at home and they are bigger favorites. Let me, uh, open up. So if we're looking at the odds and guys, this is really what I do. I just go to ESPN.com slash NFL slash scoreboard. It's already saved in my URL. So it goes there automatically. But when you're on this page, you'll see it right here, right? See the line of the game, Houston minus six. So Houston is six and a half point favorites and they're away. Whatever the top team is, is away. And the over-under is 42 and a half. When we look at the other defenses, we have Broncos are my other choice. They are at home, but they're only two and a half point favorites. And honestly, without Chris Harris, they didn't look good um, last week. And now they play the Browns, who, as I tweeted out yesterday, I'm going to pull up this tweet for you. And I put it on my Instagram. If you are following, if you're not following me on either of those, you should be because I'm throwing out fucking dimes like this. Like I'm fucking Baker Mayfield. Mm, ironically, let me see where it is. I actually went off on the game last night. So I apologize. It's going to take me like two hours to get down to it. So this is per uh, Roto World podcast. Since the Browns got rid of their coaches in week nine, right? When they got rid of Haley and they got rid of Hugh Jackson, they lead the NFL in yards per play. They have allowed a league low three sacks. Baker Mayfield leads the NFL in yards per attempt. They have converted 14 of 14 red zone opportunities into touchdowns. That's absurd. Not even field. They're not even setting anything for field goals. 14 in a row converted for touchdowns. The Browns are hot as any fucking offense in the NFL right now. So I have very little faith in Denver being banged up and playing against Cleveland. That's why I'm probably going to fade them. Okay, so Baltimore is seven and a half point favorites. Not really that high of an over under 46 and a half. And they're at home. So that matches up on everything. Seattle is only three and a half point favorites. A lot of people, I've actually gotten a lot of DMs about people wanting to bet on the Seahawks and like, oh, this is great. This is what we call a trap game, people. For those of you who do not bet, a trap game is something that looks way too fucking good on paper. It's too good to be true. So when San Francisco, right, Seattle's riding high, everyone's gotten really fucking high on them. They're like, oh, Seattle's so damn good. This is when they lose this game. Would not surprise me whatsoever if San Francisco won this game. Seattle, on the road, San Francisco's quietly been, I would love to have seen how their record turned out if they had Jimmy Garoppolo quarterback, because they're like, they play a lot of games where they're in it, right? And they could have won or, um, you know, their defense has not played as bad, but they're just like, they're a few pieces away from like really putting it all together. Anyways, 44 over under is low. Three and a half point favorites for Seattle though, which is not a big margin. So Vegas doesn't even really expect them to win by that much. And they're on the road. So it's never easy to play on the road like that. Um, and, and I just think they're, they're getting built up to the point where they're in for a letdown. That's what scares me. What doesn't scare me, obviously, is the fact that they have been playing so good. So you can't just take that for granted. So I'm kind of in a pickle between Baltimore and Seattle. Problem with Seattle, trap game, not that big of a favorites. And they're on the road. Problem with Baltimore is that I'm just a little nervous about that Tampa Bay offense going off at any point. But they did hold Mahomes down pretty well last week, so I'm not like too worried about Jameis Winston doing his thing. But again, guys, I think it's a realistic concern. I do think someone got hurt on the Seattle defense last week, though. K.J. Wright isn't expected to play in Week 15. Michael Kendricks, broken tibia in Week 14. I don't think either of them have really made a big impact, or Michael Kendricks at least hasn't, obviously, because uh, he was suspended or whatever but you know that's uh, they're a little banged up in the linebacker core so just i don't know another red flag for me so i'm probably gonna end up going with baltimore here and uh yeah that's kind of how i think about defenses guys i i think about 
the health of players, right? You got to check the injuries and all you got all you can do for that is go to Roto World, right? Go to NFL, go to player news here and you can click your team, whatever team you're looking at, whatever defense is. For me, it was the Buccaneers. So I'll click them and then I'll go to position, skill, defense. And then from there, it'll tell you all of the updates pretty much, right? I don't know why I just went to Buccaneers. It's not what I was looking for, but you know what I mean? It'll tell you all the players who have been injured or their statuses and whatnot. So look at the player injuries, look at ESPN, or you can go to any sports book, really. You can just type in NFL lines for week 15 on Google and find it. Over, under, being at home, favorites to win the game. That's kind of how I decided my defense. And definitely in the playoffs, I want to roster multiple defenses. If you only have one defense and you're playing there for week 15, I would definitely go to your waiver wire, check out who is available in week 16 that has a really good matchup, pick them up now. Uh, and that's what you should do. So that's the E-Town get down. Obviously, we're in a very tight matchup. Pray for me, please. Please pray for me in your sleep tonight. Next matchup is the New York City League. So if you guys are unfamiliar with that, pretty much this summer, I had nine of my subscribers fly out from all over the country, pretty much California, Michigan, Virginia, whatever. We kicked it for a weekend in uh, in New York City. We got a fucking dope penthouse that we Airbnb'd out for the weekend. Uh, we did a live draft and uh, I will be opening up another weekend for that this summer. So I know a lot of y'all wanted to get in on that. If you wanted to watch the vlog of that entire weekend, which was fucking awesome, um, I will link that up and down in the description. So go check that out if you're looking for a little bit of entertainment. Shout out, Monster. Get me true this video. I actually haven't drank Monster. I rarely ever drink Monster anymore. I used to drink like two of them a day. And I used to pretend like in my videos, I would always shout them out and be like, thank you for sponsoring today's video. Even though they were never fucking a sponsor in my video. But I stopped drinking them because those things fucking give me anxiety. And, and they're definitely, uh, definitely not good for you. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is the, uh, the NYC League. And those two leagues, so the, M the E Town Get Down is a $350 buy in, $3,500 pot. This one is a $250 buy in, so like a $2,500 pot, something in that range. I'm fucked in this one. I am super, super duper fucked. So last night I had Tyreek Hill and Keenan Allen combine for 6.1 points. He had Patrick Mahomes, who basically 4X'd my point total. It is looking fucking miserable for me in this one. Sit starts. This will be a good one for sit starts for you guys because some of you guys will have these questions. So we have Brady at Pittsburgh and Ben Roethlisberger versus New England. So they're playing against each other, obviously. Um, and then I have Jared Goff, Sunday night versus Philadelphia. I am debating throwing Goff in for one of these guys. What's the weather supposed to be like? Scattered thunderstorms with a high of 43, 85% chance of precipitation. So it looks like bad weather. You look at these games, when you look at Brady, when you look at Big Ben, it's like this is a game where they should both put up a ton of scoring especially big Ben, man like with james connor probably out again they're gonna have to rely on they're gonna have to keep relying on the passing game i mean look at his pass attempts over the last four games yeah last week because it was against oakland and he also got injured so that would obviously you know you got to take that into account he had 29 but three games in a row prior to that he was at 45 pass attempts or more so he was slinging the ball it's also a six point per passing touchdown league is it more likely that goff throws a bunch of touchdowns or is it more likely that todd Gurley? runs the ball 700 times. I would say the latter, but them being back at home against this Philly secondary that's ridiculously banged up, you know, this should be a bounce back game for Jared Goff and this LA passing offense. I mean, look at the last two games. Obviously, they hate playing on the road. They are not good playing on the uh, playing on the road against teams that aren't in good weather. Look at these teams. Chica at Chicago, at Detroit, look at Jared Goff's points. And these are in, in six point per passing touchdown leagues, guys. And then at New Orleans, that's good weather. At San Francisco, good weather. But Denver, Bad weather, probably cold there. Six points for him. At Seattle, probably not warm there. 14 points for him. So Jared Goff is playing in warm weather. He's going to do good. If he's at home, he's going to do even better, which is a good matchup. Brady scares me a little bit. He has not been consistent whatsoever, but he did bounce back in a big way last week against Miami, put up a 33 spot. So that's kind of my predicament right now. And historically, I was looking at some of the splits, and this is another good um, resource for you guys. Rotoviz.com slash game splits, where you could see anything from like, how Big Ben does with Le'Veon Bell in the lineup compared to without him, how Tom Brady does versus Pittsburgh compared to other teams. So that's kind of what I pulled up this week. And you could put in, there's a million different stats that you can look at if you want to break it down. And they're all kind of related to fantasy football. So here's where you put in the player that you're looking for. And then if you're just looking for something normal, like 
home and away or versus a certain team or in games where he throws the ball more than 40 times or something like that. If it's only revolved around one player, you're going to want to put the same player in all of these categories. If you're trying to look at how a player plays with and without another player, you want to put that player in here and then you want to put like, say Gronk in, in here and then figure it out from there. And then you can look at different seasons. You can look at different weeks of the seasons. You can look at over-unders, point spreads, all that kind of shit. So what we're going to do is look at Tom Brady and we're going to look at against Pittsburgh. Uh, sometimes they're fucking, God damn it, Rotoviz, you're killing my video right now. I guess uh, I think they're like kind of, I guess, an update right now because normally it would say like in split in games where he's played against Pittsburgh. So, okay, whatever. Well, I was looking at the numbers and uh, normally it would it would come up. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with Rotoviz. Shout out you for ruining my video. Thank you guys. You're all the best. But you can do that with Brady. You can look at Big Ben. And when I was looking at the numbers, both of them go off against each other, which makes sense. It always ends up being a high scoring affair for the most part, which I do expect again. But Jared Goff is in such a good spot, man. This Philadelphia secondary is just getting fucking murdered. I mean, Tyreek Hill and Keenan Allen obviously were miserable, but you weren't you weren't sitting them, of course. And uh, this game sucks, bro, because he had Pat Mahomes, he has Stefan Diggs, and these are all guys I have to fucking root for in the E-Town Get Town League, which is why I hate playing in multiple leagues. I said it last fucking night on Twitter. Next year, I'm playing one season-long league, and it's going to be a million-dollar buy-in. That's it. So at least if I'm going to have a lot of anxiety, it can only be towards one league. I don't have to worry about 17 different players. So I like have to root for and against myself. It's miserable. What I normally do for you guys that are in the same predicament like that and hate having to look at all these different teams is the E-Town Get Down is, is my baby, right? That's the one I want to win. That's the one I care about most. So I root for the players in that, right? I know he has Pat Mahomes and I know he has Stephon Diggs. I will still be rooting for those guys because that's the league I want to win the most. I do the best I can in those other leagues, picking up my waiver wire guys, setting my lineups. I make the best decisions I can, but on game day, the only game I focus on is E-Town Get Down. I let the rest take care of itself and I look at those later on. So that is kind of like a suggestion to y'all that are dealing with that kind of anxiety because tis, tis the anxiety season, baby. So Terry Kill, Keenan Allen, Amari Cooper as flex number one. Obviously, I'm not sitting him. And then my second flex spot is a little bit more difficult because it's Doug Martin. I put him in there. I just picked him up actually. And I'm deciding between all these other wide receivers. I feel like low-key Chris Godwin is in for a big bounce back game, right? Like when Deshaun Jackson does not play, he gets a ton of targets and he usually has a ton of protect, uh, production. Last week was out of the norm for him. 10 targets, one catch. It was a ridiculous performance for him, right? In a bad way. But I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, everyone's so down on him that he bounces back, right? You fade the public. You fade recency bias. But I think it's getting a little bit too cute because Doug Martin's been such a big part of this Oakland offense over the last few weeks and now he gets a ridiculously good matchup against Cincinnati who have led up I still think they're number one in terms of yeah the most the single most fantasy points to the running back position if you ever want to check that out all you do is click on the player card on Yahoo and you can see it right here and then you can go to more and you could actually break down every team and every position and things like that and then you can go to all NFL teams up here in the drop down and then you could see so Cincinnati gives up the most points to fantasy running backs Kansas City, the second most points to fantasy running back. It's just useful to kind of get a grasp on how the defense is. They might be a good real-life defense, but they give up a ton of fantasy points to the position. So a uh, great matchup for Doug Martin, and I feel like there's a good chance he kind of extends that touchdown streak. He's got three in a row. Um, I would be surprised if he didn't make it four. Oakland has actually not looked horrible, right? Derek Carr has not looked horrible as a passer. I'm a little bit nervous about them going on the road, right, all the way from Oakland down to Cincinnati, but um, I, I still have a little bit of faith, and I don't want to play Godwin over him. That's getting too cute on the road. Kenny Galladay is my other option. Um, I mean, I have multiple options, but Kenny Galladay's at Buffalo. Ridiculously tough pass defense. <clears throat> they have given up the second fewest fantasy points to the wide receiver position this year. Kenny Galladay is going to get shadowed by Tredavious White, most likely. So, that's probably a matchup I'm trying to avoid. We saw how much he struggled last week when he was getting shadowed by Patrick Peterson. Two of four, caught two of four targets for five yards. You don't need that in your fantasy lineup in the playoffs. Next option is Gus Edwards. I have very little faith in Gus Edwards this week. Um, this is a half-point PPR league. He's getting the touches, but we saw that snap percentage and the touch percentage dip down last week because Kenneth Dixon is now back in the lineup and getting more snaps, right? We saw the uh, snap counts, I think, it was like a 19 snap difference in week 13. Now it was down to like eight last week. And Jim Harbaugh said that, or was it Jim or John? I think it's John actually. Uh, Coach Harbaugh, we'll put it at that, said that Ken Dixon's role is going to grow. And I actually think this is more of a Dixon week than it is Gus Edwards. So if anyone wants to drop a bet on that, I bet Kenneth Dixon outscores Gus Edwards this week in half point PPR fantasy. So Gus is definitely not getting played in my lineup. Kenny Drake is the other guy, but like, dude, I know he's been good, but 
you can't trust him at all. Like his touch numbers, look how many rushing attempts he's gotten over the last five games. Six, seven, eight, eight, three. Last week he had the game only because that I'm pretty sure the Hail Mary play counted as his touchdown. So he shouldn't have had those points. And like, you can't rely on that. And you know, they're at Minnesota. Again, I think this is a, a big bounce back week for the Minnesota team overall, both defense and offense. Uh, I have very little faith in Kenyon Drake. I just don't want to trust that volume. So again, I think all the other players are just trying to get a little bit too cute there. Um, so I'm going to play Doug Martin. Hopefully he kind of gets in the end zone and gets me some double digit appointage there. I know he has like almost no upside, so that kind of sucks. But um, that's the lineup for this one. I'm not feeling good. Obviously, after the start, I'm projected to kind of get absolutely massacred because Tyreek Hill and Keenan Allen pretty much ruined my life. Uh, what other leagues we got going on? This one hurt a lot. This was my college friends league. You know, me and my friends from, from undergrad do a league every year. This is like our fifth year in a row or whatever, maybe actually like seventh, but I'm the defending champ. I missed out on the playoffs. As you could see, I'm in the fifth place. I ended the season on a five game winning streak. All of these teams on the way, all four of the, the teams ahead of me, I beat in that five game winning streak. The last week of the season, I beat the fourth place team and realized I was going to come up a game short, even though I had more points. So rattled off five games in a row just to fall a game short of the playoffs here. So that was fucking heartbreaking. It actually sucked because all four of these teams clinched their playoff spots like three weeks ago. And I realized, or two weeks ago, no, three weeks ago. And I realized we only had two games left. And even if I won out, which I did, uh, I wasn't making it. And it sucks because my team were kind of unhealthy all year. But like, look how stacked my team is. Um, Mahomes, Keenan Allen, the wide receiver two is the only kind of like faulty spot I have. But between Godwin and Corey Davis, they would have been fine. But my running backs, Dalvin Cook, Philip Lindsay, David Johnson, Spencer Ware, when Hunt got out, obviously, Aaron Jones, Lamar Miller. So this was kind of just heartbreaking because I feel like I could have made some noise in the playoffs. This is the other redraft league that I'm in that I'm in the playoffs. So this is a 14 team league, half PPR, super flex. This is the uh, Fantasy Jocks annual league. They do one with their office and their friends or whatever, and they've invited me for the last few years. Again, yeah, this is 14 teams, and I ended up getting the second seed overall. Um, second seed overall, and I got to buy the first round. Moved on to the second round, and this is a team that had I picked Le'Veon Bell uh, second overall. I have James Conner, so he's hurt. I had AJ Green, so he was gone. And I had Emmanuel Sanders, so now he's gone. So there's really, I have no business winning this league whatsoever, but we're kind of chugging along. This is the matchup we're playing against. And it sucks because I was playing, you know, Travis, I needed Travis Kelsey to do well. The only upside here is that he, where's the matchup? God damn it. Is that I was playing against him in this league. So he had Travis Kelsey, not, I mean, not a bad week, 9.6 points, but like you kind of need Travis Kelsey to go off for like a 15 or 20 spot in the playoffs, of course. So, um, I'm not feeling confident whatsoever in this team because of so many injuries, right? Between Connor, AJ Green, Emmanuel Sanders, like what do you, it's hard to expect really anything, but the lineup I put together is not terrible. I don't really have a lot of sit start decisions. The only one I, I would consider is a sit start decision is between Sproles and Chris Ivory, assuming LaShawn McCoy is hurt. Um, you know, it's hard to trust Chris Ivory. He's almost like a poor man's Doug Martin right now. Um, they're both in poor offenses, but they're both going to get the majority of rushes in their offense i think doug martin you know just having a better matchup against the cincinnati Bengals would probably lean me towards doug martin if i was deciding between those two for chris ivory though they're going against detroit now detroit had been a poor rush defense basically all year but they are uh, much improved since they got snacks harrison over from the giants and on the flip side the giants have been terrible against the run without him so that's a downgrade for Chris Ivory, and I don't expect much out of him in that offense, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe Josh Allen's a fine play, but I don't want Ivory in my lineup, especially not over Doug Martin. But I put Darren Sproles in because I, I talked about it this week, right? With Corey Clement out, Darren Sproles kind of takes over the majority of the passing work there. And we saw him actually get more snaps than Josh Adams last week. And I think that's a phase that we're going to continue seeing. And they're going to be with Nick Foles. And I just, I just think they're going to be trailing a lot. I think the Rams are in for a bounce back. I think they're in for a big offensive night. So I think Darren Sproles probably sees the field a lot more than Josh Adams, who's a lead runner. They're not going to have positive game script. They're not going to be able to kill the clock. For that reason, um, I would actually play, I would play Darren Sproles over Josh Adams if I had the chance to. So um, just because James Conner's out, I really don't have a lot of options here as my RB2. In a 14-team league, it, it's really hard to get running backs off the wire. So I was lucky enough that I got Darren Sproles here. And I was lucky enough that I picked up Philip Lindsay early on in the season. Um, just good drafting otherwise with Ben Brady as my quarterbacks, George Kittle as my tight end, of course. Um, the other spot is, is my flex. Um, so we have the super flex, right? So we have quarterback one, and then we have a super flex spot, and then one regular flex, which is obviously wide receiver, running back, tight end. Curtis Samuel, Chris Ivory, Tim Patrick, like I could choose between those three. 
I have Curtis Samuel in there right now because he's been such a big part of this offense as of late, and he has been consistently producing, even as Cam Newton's kind of been shitty. Um, the Saints have given up, I think, the most points to fantasy wide receivers on the entire season. So they're a team that I would expect having to, you know, throw a lot. And I think Curtis Samuel's a good bet to, you know, if he can give me double digit fantasy points, I'm perfectly happy with that. Cause I don't expect that from Ivory unless he gets a lucky touchdown. I'm not gonna bank on that. Tim Patrick's obviously we've only seen one good week out of him. I'm definitely not gonna bank on that either. Although Denzel Ward is out, so the matchup gets a little bit easier for him. I'm not gonna play him over Curtis Samuel because he's been too consistent right now and he's been completely out snapping and out playing Devin Funches. So I kind of like Curtis Samuel here. Again, this is definitely not a good lineup for me right now because of all the injuries. But you know, when you're in a 14 team league and you have three or four of your best players get hurt, there's nothing you could do. So hopefully I can get lucky and squeeze past the victory here. And then James Conner is back next week. And then in the defensive spot, we have the Ravens and Buffalo. And I think I might, you know, diversify the revenue a little bit and go with Buffalo here over Baltimore, even though they're projected almost two less points, right? I have Baltimore in the E-Town Get Down League. And like I said, I'm a little nervous about Tampa Bay going off for 400 yards passing on any given week. But Buffalo's at home in a ridiculously low over-under total. Let me uh, pull that up for us. Uh, 39 and a half. They are two and a half point favorites at home. So like, I don't know. I just think they're in a good spot for this game to have like fucking 17 points scored, a bunch of sacks and uh, some fantasy points for Buffalo. So... It's not necessarily that I think Buffalo's a much better start than the Ravens, but I like to diversify the revenue a little bit here. So I might make that swap come Sunday. I'll do it now just in case I forget because I stay be doing that if I get hung over and whatnot. I mean, that's that's really the only sit starts I had to make this week. Um, luckily, for the most part, I've drafted pretty well. So like the guys that I drafted that are high on have performed pretty well. Outside of David Johnson's fucking bum ass. But um, that's kind of my process when I go through it, right? I go through the matchups, I go through defensive injuries, I'll look on pro football focus and look at like wide receiver cornerback matchups. This is part of a package, the PFF Edge package, which is like $30 for the season. Highly recommend. There's a bunch of tools outside of just a wide receiver cornerback matchup. But this is that chart that a lot of people wonder like where they can get it. And there's like a $5 coupon down below, a link in the description if you want to grab this through that link. Um, so it's really like $25. Obviously, I wouldn't suggest grabbing it now, but at the beginning of next season, I'll remind you guys again. But when you're picking wide receivers, hit starts and things like that, you could look at the matchups here and just see who is expected to get who. Like, for instance, how I said Kenny Galladay is expected to get Tredavious White. Here's what we have. Kenny Galladay, Tredavious White. And I know there's a lot of numbers, but once you get down to the thick of it... Um, it's a lot easier to kind of understand. This is just the height, the weight, the speed of each player. Um, the number of routes they've run that year, the percentage of routes they've run from the left side, percentage of routes they've run from the slot, percentage of routes they've run from the right side, uh, targets per route run, fantasy points per route run, catch percentage, yards per route run, and their overall PFF grade, um, as well as who they would consider having the advantage in the wide receiver cornerback matchup. So anything that's like white is pretty much insignificant. They kind of think it's like a wash. Um, and if the players are capitalized, like Tredavious White's name is capitalized, that means they expect shadow coverage from those guys, but not a lot of people really get a uh, name capitalization. I'll go through it quickly here because I know a lot of you guys kind of like that um, to go through the who's getting shadowed and who's not. So we have Patrick Peterson is um, capitalized. He is expected to shadow Julio, which I love because Peterson was not shadowing over the beginning of the year. Um, but now they've kind of switched it up and he's been shutting receivers down and they actually give the advantage to Peterson om almost into the green zone. He's at minus 8%. So that that's a advantage towards the cornerback. Um, but they give it to him, which I don't hate because I'm going against Julio in the E-Town get down league. I need as much help as I can get because I'm also going against Barkley and Christian McCaffrey. They expect <laughs> Darius Slay to shadow Zay Jones. That's um, kind of interesting. Zay Jones runs 52% of his routes from the slot. Darius Slay usually doesn't go into the slot, but that's, uh, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm not sure if that will actually happen, but they don't have Kelvin Benjamin there without a lot of their wide receivers right now. So wouldn't expect, uh, wouldn't be surprised, I guess, if Zay Jones was shadowed, um, but Darius Slay on Zay Jones, like we already said, Tredavis White on Kenny Galladay, Casey Hayward on Terry Kill. So we saw that last night, Xavier Hayward, on uh, Xavier Rhodes on Devontae Parker. It's fucking irrelevant. If you are starting Devontae Parker, you are not in the playoffs this week. Joe Hayden expected to shadow Josh Gordon. Joe Hayden's surprisingly been very good this year, so that's a downgrade for Josh Gordon. James Bradbury expected to shadow Michael Thomas. thing about the shadowing, guys, is you got to make sure that the guy shadowing is actually good. Like, Michael Thomas has a gigantic advantage. The thing is, like, most of the time, if you're going to use a cornerback to shadow, 
they do that because their cornerback's really good, right? And he could take out opposing wide receivers. However, Michael Thomas has just been so damn good this year that a guy like James Bradbury, he's grading out as like a Ugh, like he's actually that's not a good grade whatsoever so he's a mid-tier if anything cornerback this year Michael Thomas is a top tier wide receiver so it's a heavy advantage towards Michael Thomas Stefan Gilmore expected to shadow Antonio Brown Ooh, Antonio Brown has not had a good grade this year he is uh, kind of dipped off as, as good as the stats have been lately he has not really played like the uh the old Antonio Brown surprisingly so going to be a very tough matchup for him to kind of overcome Stefan Gilmore and that is the last of the expected shadow coverages for this week pretty much. Again, this is the PFF Edge package. There will be a link and a promo code down below if you're interested in checking it out. They have the wide receiver cornerback matchups. They have all the player grades that you always hear about on Twitter or Pro Football Focus, whatever. They have a huge fantasy stats like chart that you can kind of filter down by anything. They have OL, offensive line, defensive line matchup charts, kind of just like the wide receiver cornerback matchup shadow coverage matrix so it tells you throughout the year like the history of guys that they've been using to shadow so as you can see like arizona on top anytime they have, they have an x here that means they've used shadow coverage during that week so they didn't use shadow coverage at all from weeks one to five they started using a little bit more and if you scroll down it'll actually show you like who was used in shadow coverage and who they shadowed so um the last three guys that patrick peterson is shadow Kenny Galladay, zero for zero against him. Devontae Adams, one for eight on four targets against him. Terry Kill, two for 42. So shadow doesn't necessarily mean they stick to you on 100% of the routes, but they do give you the percentage of the routes that he did shadow or cover him on. So just interesting to see nonetheless. And uh, yeah, that's that's that. So um, that's kind of all I had, I think, for this episode. If you enjoyed, if you have any sit star questions of your own, I'll try to get to as many as I possibly can. Don't for let me uh, widen myself out. This is the OBS software. If anyone is looking for streaming, streaming software, yeah. So that's that's that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed and found it valuable. If you did, as always, I would much appreciate the uh, thumbs up in the video uh, for the support. Comment, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Uh, go cop yourself some merch. BigDogsFantasy.com. Go go cop yourself a hat. Go cop one for your loved ones. I don't know, man. Go show some support somehow. I love y'all. Good luck in your playoff matchups. Please pray for me in the E-Town Get Down League. I need to hold that belt. I really do. For the sake of the podcast, I love you. It's Friday. We out. Enjoy your weekend.